Today I'm going to do one of my informational videos on wheel bearings. How they fit together within uh, the hub assembly and how they fit onto your vehicle. Um, the reason I want to kind of do a, an informational video on these is because bearings are one of those parts that can cause you a lot of grief when they wear and um, there's one thing I want maybe to get you out of, uh, to, for a person to get out of this video is that sometimes when you're doing a job there are some times when it's worth spending a little extra money and I'm going to get to that when I describe how these pieces all fit together. So here's a brand new bearing in a future video I'm going to press this into a hub assembly using this press over here. Now That's a bearing, as I said, and here's the hub with the bearing already pressed into it. You see the hub here, spinning in the bearing. There's our bearing. Different vehicle, but same, same idea. Now we notice, as I turn the hub, the outside of the bearing is spinning, the inside is stationary, obviously. So this is the point in the the hole in the vehicle where the wheel is turning here and this is the part where no pun intended the rubber kind of meets the road here there's one part moving being the actual the wheel and the drive axle and this is where these parts come together a moving part and a non-moving part the outside of the bearing here now the one thing I want to try to get across here as far as spending money for the particular vehicle we're going to change this out on this assembly costs I think it was hundred and forty two dollars in Canada the bearing for the that's not the bearing for the same vehicle but the bearing for this same vehicle was forty dollars so I'm a big proponent of saving money when you can but uh, as we talk along here, I'm going to kind of explain that this may be one of the points where it's worth spending a bit of extra money. So, to summarize how these parts all fit together, now we have our steering knuckle. So the steering knuckle, here's our hub and bearing assembly, and there's the, there's the, the hub and bearing as assembly here actually attached to the steering knuckle. So now to try to basically get this whole idea, this is our steering knuckle as we just discussed with our hub and bearing assembly attached to it. And right now we're going to just quickly go to my front end simulator here that we used in a couple other videos that uh, where we talked about suspension components and then there was another video where we talked about steering components. And we'll use it again here. So here's our drive shaft. Turning here within the bearing that we just discussed. Outside here, here's the rotor, and we can see the end of our drive shaft right there by my finger. So that's spinning within this bearing. And here is a bearing that I knocked apart for the purposes of this video so that we can see the idea of what's happening here. I put my fingers in there and I'm spinning this around spinning that around. So there it is turning around. That's the idea of a bearing. Drive shaft comes through there the spline shaft goes and is bolted on the other side. So now if you look in there you can actually see the balls all greased up and that's how it's able to spin like so. So what happens is, when this bearing eventually wears out, your drive shaft is going to kind of move within it. So, to go back to our scenario we're talking about here, here's our steering knuckle, the bearing wears out. So what your mechanic is going to do is get that bearing out of the hub assembly. This is what we're talking about with the bearing. Now here's the part I'm talking about where you might be willing to spend a little extra cash. 
what he's going to do is press this bearing into the knuckle and the hub assembly. Now there's all sorts of guys that can do this, obviously. It's not like we're splitting the atom here, but unfortunately there's people that think they can do it and they actually can't because what they do is pound this bearing into the assembly. The problem with that is, that realistically in my opinion anyway, the only proper way to do that, and it is the, the way that most of the big shops will do it, is they'll take the shop press and they'll press it in. And we're going to do a video on that. Um, there's, there's actually guys, there's, it's kind of a talent, that can pound these bearings, get this whole ass hub assembly together, nicely do that, but there's also people that do it and they damage the bearing because if you're pounding that into the knuckle or that uh, into the hub assembly together like that, there's you basically have to get that dead on. And that's kind of a skill. Some guys will put the, put the bearing in the freezer and there's little tricks like that. But my point being that if you can get your bearing and hub assembly in one and it's not outrageously expensive, in my opinion, that's a good time to say, you know what, might be worth spending a little extra money and getting the whole hub and bearing assembly as one. So, at the end of this video, I'm just going to basically lay out here quickly what's involved in this. Now, I did a video a while ago, um, how to remove a steering knuckle. We uh, went through that process, but just seeing as how I have this set up here, just to... As I say, I'm not trying to intimidate anybody from doing a particular job because that's what all this, these videos are about. It's trying to encourage people to, to uh, do some work, change some things out that they might have been uh, a little uh, nervous about or whatever. Most people could do most things if they got the, the right tools. But I'm just going to quickly go through the rough procedure for the particular vehicle that this is to get the bearing out. And all I'm trying to get across to you is that it's a relatively big job, and it might be worth spending that extra money instead of trying to press that bearing in if you don't have a, an actual shop press to do it. So basically, generally, the vehicle will be supported. Going to have to release the tie rod end. The sequence of this is not, a, not exact. I'm just showing you what's involved here. So your mechanic or yourself or whoever's doing it's going to release that. Then, in this vehicle, we simulated here, it's got an upper control arm. Castle nut's going to come off of there. The lower ball joint would have to be released. Probably going to have to force that out with the inert. Scenario here, a lower control arm is actually this piece of 2x4. So that will be released under here. There's the lower ball joint. That uh, bolt would be forced off of there. This whole unit would come out. Oh, sorry, spindle nut would have to come off the drive shaft. This would get pounded through. Skipping steps here. It doesn't matter, like I say, this is just kind of an informational thing anyway. The brake rotor comes off and the lines associated with it, or it could be tied aside actually, but so the brake rotor comes off. Then this rotor would have to come off. And they're usually a lot of work to pound them off or force them off. And then the drive shaft would come out through here. Sticking on me there. Huh? Where's my hammer? We'll use this damaged old tie rod end. Now, you wouldn't want to do that, except for on something like this, for you to demonstrate it. Anyways. There's a drive shaft with the splines on it. This whole unit would come out. So hopefully you basically get the idea that it's a relatively big job. And then you'd have your knuckle 
the bearing hub assembly there and change that bearing. So my point being, there's a fair bit to it and you might want to consider spending a couple extra dollars because if you if that bearing gets damaged going in there you'd have to go through the whole same process again.